Sam. Psycho Alpha Disco. Let me stop. Psycho <laughs> Alpha. Oh, we can't sing that. Okay, but so yeah. we're swimming today. Yes, we are learning. Swimming to in swim. cash. Swimming in business. We are learning to swim and going to take how to show people how to dive into real profits with a swim instructor who's gone mobile. Her name is Sam Caballero. Swim with Sam is here today, with us today to show you, hey, if there's something you got in mind and you don't want to do the brick and mortar thing, you want to actually be mobile because mobile is very much trending these days. She's got a great example for you to model mm. your mobile business after. So stick and stay for this one hour, the best one hour of your day. You got great giveaways, including you're going to get to help Sam come up with a slogan for her new branding, uh, brand, new branding design. So Wait a minute. Today, okay, of course, this is a talk show, so we'll be talking back and forth with our audience, but today, whoever wins the second giveaway gets to help make a decision. They get a have a real vote on her, on her branding, a slogan for her t-shirt line for her brand swim theory. Okay. So all that's taking place. But wait, is she gonna help us out with the business side of things? Because she just won a grant, uh, a, a large grant. Of, mm -hmm. We can start with the big check, like the big, you know how they hand you a big check? Right. And Like a publisher clearinghouse check. Yeah, yeah. And so with that, she's going to give us some tips she's and tricks gonna, on how to get there like her. Exactly. She's going to show us how to take your business mobile and how to be successful doing it all on this episode. Mm, you know, we down got, wait, to wait. We got business people in the room, Corey. K Business Podcast is hey, all about K business. K Business Podcast, my friend, my friend, how have you been? Well, you know, I'm shouting him out because he's Nigerian. Nigerian and hey, so hello. Okay, well, hey, now we got to say hello to Philip. That's my brother, our favorite moderator. WJ <laughs> from VA, two up, two down. We're supposed to open the show. How are we going to open the let's show? Let's go. Let's but no, Cassandra South Fulton Garden is here. And so, so is Veggie Veggie. Veggie Veggie, man. We got all of them crashing in. Early. Even Miss Judy from Kenya. And Ms. I don't know Judy. if you can swim, Judy, but I don't know how good you're swimming in business. But that's what today is all about. And of course, if you're watching on how the to replay. Dive into real money. Yeah. So if you're watching on the replay, this information is good for you as well. And of course, there's always something for you on the replay. While you're here, though, do like Philip Waldo Jr. and K Business Podcast, as well as Cassandra's. South, South Fulton. Fulton Garden, <laughs> put in hashtag the home team. That gets you in the running for our first giveaway. That's one of the benefits to being live, but we got to start the show. So let's go, let's go, let's start the show without real talk within Toby Design. Why are you Intro. doing all that? <laughs> it's another episode of a blind guy. It's why. <laughs> <laughs> <You're all right. laughs> Hey everybody, I'm Corey the Blind Guy. I'm his wife, Laquita Marie. Together we let you into our life live. live. Every hump day, bang, bang, to Friday. Don't lose your mind, Corey. I know you taught me how to swim, and but well, I you taught know, you business. We got swim instructor here, so I, I was going to tighten up on the stroke, but I, I, I kept it low-key for This Thursday. is a family <laughs> show, Corey. Uh, you actually... Corey, you taught, y'all know Corey can't see. His eyes don't work. He has not been able to see for like 25 years. So I'm going to do a lot of talking. I'm going to be reading the chat. So like, for example, David Hunt, he's here with hashtag the home team. We didn't even get to finish the intro. I know, <laughs> but you taught us how to swim. I got to finish this story, Corey. We got to get into story time earlier. Lord knows. Bang, bang. Now you're influencing him, negatively influencing David Hunt, who does the best meditation music every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and look how you're affecting him. But <laughs> I'm gonna finish this story for Audrey's Living Life. Corey taught all of us how to swim. Oh, after the story, we'll say hello really quickly because we got to bring in the guests because she's the real pro. Pro, the pro professional swim instructor and a professional business woman who's making it, making money mobily, making, she's making it rain. Mobily, that's mobily. not a word. Well, mobily is a word. So basically she can help us with our businesses because she's in yep. person and she's mobile and that's what she's going to teach us. So Corey taught me how to swim. He taught all three of our daughters how to swim, but we only know how to like, uh, dog paddle and stuff. We don't know how to know what, uh, we don't know how to do what swim with Sam. Lord, Miss Judy Kenya. See, she all the way in Kenya tomorrow. It's the bang, bang for me. <laughs> hey, Wally. Bang, bang. <laughs> Make sure y'all do not follow Wally. Wally. He Wally. says, I know, he says, it's the my riggedness. Y'all know the show, it's not really rigged, but don't shout him out, David Hunt. Make sure you all are putting in hashtag the home team. Let's bring her in, Corey, because... Oh. You okay? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. 
We, they we, want to see Swim with Sam. Every hump day to Friday. That's Wednesday. Thursday. Friday at 11 15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Well, we change the narrative of normal about health, business, and wealth. And we do that by introducing you to fabulous folks like today's special guest, Swim with Sam. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Hey. Hi, everybody. It's nice to be here. All right, Sam. Well, we are glad you took some time to be here today. Sam, Sam swam. Ooh, not yet. <laughs> watching. Professor Black Ops is watching. Now, he is cybersecurity for, security for the people. So I know you're rebranding with your business. If you need any security checks, because this guy is the truth. Oh, shoot, Court, the uh, fire department, they actually opening up the water hose. Sorry, Sam, I should have muted. Okay, so. Uh, <laughs> Reporting to you live from the streets of our front of our house, there's a fire truck opening up the fire house. I, mean, I had to mention it because there's water involved that Sam, oh, maybe the building is on fire. There's two trucks. Ooh, so. Who's just trying to cover up the sirens? That's the police coming for her, so. Yeah, you know what? I'm, if, if I'm gone, I'll do it Cause, remotely. I'll work. Because you know, if Sam start looking around, he's like, oh, shoot, I hear sirens. So. Are you wanted, Sam, other than for. <laughs> Swim instructor. And uh oh, she looking side to side. <laughs> well, Why did Judy say you seem to be a good dancer when you saying bang bang? You know what? Bang. No, no, bang. that's not what I meant. <laughs> Let's just get back to Sam. We want the secret, Sam. We know that you can swim. We know that you're a swim instructor, right? Uh, however, we also know that you are like an award-winning swim instructor you work in florida you know wally's in florida by the way i don't know if wally can swim he's from haiti uh but wally is in florida a uh, lots of people are all over do you travel mainly just to florida and virginia or are you also will you travel to other places so i'm actually originally from florida from miami and my business started in Miami. Mm -hmm. So when I transitioned to Virginia, I was commuting, you know, because of family things, but also swim season is practically all year in Florida. Mm -hmm. So right. I definitely had some longstanding clients that I've been working with that some of them are seasonal and just come for the summer or sometimes just during the winter. So I would go to Florida. That's me working with someone now. Um, I would go to Florida working with clients when I would be down. And then when I come back to Virginia, um, I'm working with people that are locally here. So tell everybody. Wait a minute. Kay says Wally cannot swim because we're looking at a video on her Instagram. Now, uh, scrolling at the bottom of the screen, you all, is her information right now. So if you need to follow her on Instagram, our moderators will be dropping it as well. Dropping the links. Thanks. Dropping mm -hmm. the links. Oh, another fire truck. So anyways, this gentleman here, uh, your business is amazing because obviously you're not filming and the camera is moving. So how did do, how does this work with your business? Are people signing waivers so that they can come in and be film on film and they're okay? And you know, because being being in the water is a pretty vulnerable place yeah. when you know, so tell us how that works for people looking at what are the legal aspects of business and you know you have a camera there what if there's a mishap how does that work do you have waivers or are you just like oh no i like your business sense is what i'm trying to get at how did you know what to do to set your business up properly man that's a great question i knew absolutely nothing when i first got started i kind of thought of what does it take to run a business what does it take to make my business look legit because a lot of us do side hustles a lot of us have skill sets but to monetize your skill set and have it be legal other than just registering your LLC, getting an EIN number, the logistics between the government and you, mm -hmm. you know, there are other legal aspects you have to keep in mind. So yes, absolutely having like a video and photography waiver, any kind of media waiver that you can create to ensure that clients are okay with you capturing any kind of media of them and their children as well especially if they're minors. And in my industry, you tend to work with a lot of minors. And so ensuring that we have, yes, yeah, one of my, one of my <laughs> favorites. So yeah, so ensuring cool. that, you know, you have consent from their parents. Because even though you work with people, not everybody's interested in being on the internet or being in right. the internet or any kind of media that your content can show up on, like this podcast today. So definitely See? having waivers in contracts is important. So when people sign a contract with me, the waiver is already included that they're co-signing to having video photography done of them and that it'll be used in any content that may happen in the nearby future. So... 
So you mentioned having, and that's all great information that everybody needs. You mentioned in that great information, you said that you know you have to have a relationship with the government straight, the LLC, the EIN. You have to have contracts and waivers depending on the clientele you're working with. What about in this this in this industry that you're in? What what kind of insurance do you have to have? Because a lot of people don't realize business insurance is very very uh, important. I mean, we we carry it with our business, Atupan Entertainment, so that we can protect ourselves, our audience members that come to our presentations, and the venue itself but what about you because you're mobile and that means you're not do you have to have business say say for example you're mobile you say you travel between florida and uh virginia because you're originally from florida but yoga yeah. with goga he's in kenya we know you ain't going all the way to kenya but mm -hmm. if you did either way you want to have insurance to cover you right mm -hmm. so tell us a little bit about in business insurance because i know that you're like okay yeah i can swim i want to teach people but i have to learn the business side of things in order to, like you said, be legit. So yeah. is there a certain place that people can just Google to see what type of insurance for their business or speak for yourself and just tell us how did that work for you? So business insurance wasn't something that I prioritized at first, but definitely I, I'd probably say maybe in my second year, I was like, I need business insurance because understanding legally, God forbid something happens, somebody can sue you, even though you think you may be highly skilled in your craft, things happen just like car accidents. You've probably been driving for decades, but anybody can get in a car accident. And when someone gets in a car accident, somebody wants to get paid. So yep. just in case something happened with me or something happened to a client in the pool, whether it's at their home in a community center, you want to ensure that you're protected. So I do have business insurance um, for liability. Uh, business insurance actually isn't that hard to get. I, I personally just Googled. And you know, you call when you're call inquiring about insurance policies, they definitely ask interesting specific questions. So sometimes some people may not offer insurance policies for your particular industry. And so for me in particular, there were several companies that did not offer insurance policies for oh. some instruction. And so it took me a few tries that's to find good. wait a minute. So that's good to know because like you're saying, some insurance policies did not offer insurance for a swim which means you have to ask but you have to first of all know what type of business you're in know what type of services you're providing and like for you like you were saying you said okay i'm servicing children uh like this little cute little kid right here i'm servicing adults i'm doing all this different stuff i have to know that if i'm pouring a bucket of water over a child's head will the insurance come because that's what's happening here corey <laughs> <laughs> and the baby girl is laughing <laughs> uh, uh and this is so cute. I'm, I'm guessing that, like you said, you have to know the type of business. You got to ask the right questions. Speaking of questions, Wally, you know, when somebody cute, they just automatically assume that you're from the better parts. Wally's talking about, I you from Florida? Cry. I bet you're from the better parts of Florida. <laughs> I cry. I am from Miami, born and raised. Oh, nice. I'm 305, yes. Okay, okay, sweet. From 305. Now, mm -hmm. I just want to just I want to stay on the insurance thing because a lot of people don't aren't aware of how that works because now how does that work going into let's say for example if I needed swim lessons from you I don't have a pool in my home at my home I don't have a pool in my community but there mm -hmm. is a local pool at the are you gonna ask about the ice bucket challenge because mm -hmm. TWP popcorn talking about ooh the ice bucket challenge you know that baby didn't get no ice <laughs> No, but I, it is thank cute. You, oh. I was, I was going to say, do you have to carry special insurance that covers the venue? Because you know, a lot of people that might have mobile businesses that might have to step inside another venue to conduct that business. Do you have to have something to cover that venue? <laughs> no, it's not specifically for the venue. One, the venue has its own insurance, but mm. two, because you're operating, if you know, not every outside pool will allow an, ins an instructor to come in for their own personal liability and coverage because mm -hmm. they have coverage on every single instructor. Where places that do, you have to have your own insurance. So liability insurance usually want to be covered for at least a million dollars. It sounds mm -hmm. expensive, but it's really not expensive. Um, for mm -hmm. example, when I called about my policy, really what they want to know is when you're conducting your business, what are you touching? Where are you? What things are you doing? What things are you using? So for me, I'm a mobile instructor, meaning that I travel to people's homes, to their apartment complexes or community pool to meet them and teach them how to swim. But that does not require me to go into their home. It does not require me to touch any of their stuff. It requires me to walk into their backyard, walk mm -hmm. into the pool. Not, and sometimes it doesn't well, you know, this is, to touch them. This is 
You said sometimes, say that again. I said it also doesn't even necessarily require that I need to physically touch them. So in terms of liability issues, it's actually quite low. Now, there is, obviously every business has some kind of contingency, God forbid, an accident may happen, someone slips and falls, you know, death is always, unfortunately, a possibility. Yeah. But other than, you know, the extremes on a regular day to day basis, it's actually quite low risk for. Well, I do day. have a question then. Speaking of risks, because GT Jr. grows in Alaska. <laughs> right. He is in Alaska growing all kinds of food and things. Now, Ism is growing something else. He's out in Arizona. Spot, man. <laughs> That's it. He's out there in Arizona having a good time talking to our moderators. Speaking of moderators, we do have Gail at night dropping all of your links. So, of course, on Instagram, you swim with Sam. Your LinkedIn is swim with Sam. Your website is also swim with with Sam. So that means like Gilga with Goga out there in Kenya can just Google swim with Sam. I know that if they're in Namibia, same thing, right? Because she's Sonia Tube is here from Namibia. So here's the thing. If we're talking about liability, we're talking about, you know, safety and all of those things. Give everyone here one tip that, you know, you want to leave them with. Because of course, we're just saying good morning to you right now. And everybody's putting in hashtag the home team. And we'll get more into detail about any questions that you all have. Because G. Albert is old, right? He's a grandpa. That's what the G is for. <laughs> yeah, women with G. Albert. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, yeah. so tell us a tip that you would give anybody that might be looking to dive deeper into real money and taking their business mobile. No, we want a test question, course. She has an exam on her thing. Uh, you got She got swim exam prep. You got to take a test. Okay, go ahead. Give us the tip. <laughs> <laughs> um, i say any a tip for any everybody that is, whether it's business or swimming, um, I honestly say just go out and do the thing because for people that want to learn how to swim, most people don't swim because they never took the opportunity to learn. And most people don't start a business because they don't take the leap of faith. But honestly, really just theoretically, like diving in does work. It works mm -hmm. because it gives you the experience. It allows you to test to see what works. It allows you the opportunity to like push boundaries and see what you're really mm -hmm. made of. So there's... There's always a risk, but usually the risk works in your favor because even if you don't end up having a million dollar company, you learn like what works best for you when you realize that I took a chance on something, something I may have regretted 20 years down the road. Nice. Right. Okay. Well, thank you, Sam. Well, Sam, I know you got lots more to share with us, but what we're going to do right now is we're going to put you back in the virtual green room and you give gonna her a break. Able, yeah, give you a break. You're going to be able to get some uh, computerized coffee. Mm. Some, uh, I got real coffee. You got, can get some computerized coffee, you can get some <laughs> electronic Eggo waffles, whatever it is that you want out of that virtual room, you grab it, eat it, and enjoy it. We'll be seeing you for the first place pony drawing, okay? Okay. All right. See you soon. Corey, why are they talking trash? TWP popcorn. If you can't swim, you bound to drizzle. <laughs> <laughs> and then, oh, you know what? And G. Albert says, uh, talking to Philip Waldo Jr. I thought swim had a different meaning yesterday, but now swim really means swimming. Yesterday it was swam. swam Today yeah. it's swimming. Y'all look, we got all the acronyms for you, but really swim uh, is swim. Today, Today swim is swimming in the water. Swim yeah, yesterday. swimming in business, swimming in wealth, and money, yes. health, business, and wealth, because that's all the things that Sam is doing today. So of course, as we go through uh, finishing up the hellos like to Rambo green hands Rambo over in the UK. Yes, he's Jamaican uh, And while he is Haitian David Hunt is Trinidadian. So you're, I only have two Nigerians with K business podcast and um, That's it. Oh dang one. Well, K has a wife. So she not in the live stream <laughs> Dang Rambo. I love you, but you just you just really took me down to an island gal, but I so, accept it But this broadcast <laughs> is powered by StreamYard and our viewers support by members like you, you. Get down with the home team and don't drown, but <laughs> bum rush the buttons. Yeah. That means to like, share, subscribe so that YouTube knows this is content that other people need and they can help them to find it easily. Absolutely. Give us a thumbs up that lets other people know that you love this information and it lets them know to find it. It, it kind of tells the algorithm what to do or whatever. So that means that when Corey was saying, Check out the home team scrolling right there at the bottom of the screen is blindguyhiswife.com. That's where you can go if you'd like to join the home team and deepen that relationship with us. 
And don't forget, while you're on blindguyswife.com, we have opportunities for you to be an ambassador for our digital our digital audio story downloads. Oh, you can okay. earn up to thirty three percent of profits for each digital download sold through your affiliate link. So, so I'll show that because right now I'm on Join the Home Team where they can click the green coffee cup. Oh, oh, so that she can say what you doing, and I can say, girl, you know what I'm doing. I'm fitting to jump in that pool like Sam and cause a wave that's going to stir it like coffee. Clang, 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 splash, splash, clean. You know what? You're doing a lot. But if you are there, I'm going to show you how to get to the opportunities page from blindguyhiswife.com. Click the green coffee cup. Corey can't see. He has not been able to see for over 25 years. So you can always get one, three, or five coffees, but we type in 25 as an example. Leave your name, say something nice, and join supporters like Sandra Green, Sheila, uh, Bravo with Sheila, Lady Let's Chat, Garden State Garden. Thank you, Joe. Uh, and thank you to Next Gen Investor TV and everyone else that has joined the home team. Now, when you click on the opportunities tab, that is where you can either, we're storytellers, you all. So you can either download a story or you can be an affiliate for these stories. If you need to know more information, there are games right there so that you can understand what each story is about and all of those good things. And if you become an affiliate, you can also listen to the story complimentary. Just send us a message and that's the way that works. Corey, they are chatting it up in the chat. Sure, they're putting me. in- uh, Hashtag the home team. Yes, they're putting in hashtag the home team. Well, like Hilma, Hilma Israel says, Sonia, we're everywhere. Hey. <laughs> I'm talking about uh, Namibia. Hey. Uh, Sonia in Namibia. <laughs> Uh, Corey, Next Gen is here. So many people are oh, here. That's four reviews. Yes, I think it's five. Everybody's still putting in hashtag the home team and all of those good things. So look, we have so many people in the chat. Make sure you don't forget to put in hashtag, hashtag the home team. Wally, Wally would... says, I'm hating on the Islanders. You know what? Just, you know what? I love you, Wally. You're, you're from Haiti and I love Haiti, but I just want to be Nigerian. That's all. <laughs> what? Oh, I said I, I want to be Haiti. No, you said I love Haiti. Then it sounds funny going back. Haiti. Say, yeah, the... <laughs> I love Haiti. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. But, we're gonna give you a sneak peek at the plant-based tree for the day. Sneak peek, sneak peek at the plant-based tree. Yay. Oh yes, because what happens is we definitely want you all to eat your fruits and vegetables every day. We're not uh, the plate popo. We are not fruit hoodlums. We're not vigilantes, mealtime marines, or suppertime security guards. Wally has told us we are plate <laughs> advisors. Absolutely. So that means we're advising you to eat fruits and vegetables every day. And of course, this is something everyone can relate to with uh, Rambo Green Hands. He has a beautiful garden growing things, but I'm not sure if you grow these peas. So here's a sneak peek at today's plant-based tree. Peas that please. All right. So I got all right, that's it. That's all we can give you is a sneak peek at those black eyed peas, which are the treat. Let's get it going, Let's Corey. Let's get ready to and ride in the first place, Tony <laughs> Derby. So keep on hashtagging the home team. And while we're doing that, we're going to bring in Swim With Sam. Oh, yes. Let's bring Swim With Sam back. So good morning. Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> hey there. Listen, we know that you're a swim instructor and you are you have a business. You're an award-winning swim instructor. And so you are all about, look, I'm in business. I've got a sink or swim. You've been giving us insurance tips, uh, what worked for you. Tell us about- How did you get started with this business? Because again, we have choices in business. It's just like we have choices in the swimming pool. We can sink or we can swim. So how did the two come together where the passion for the pool became a passion, <laughs> a passion for the pool that led to profits? <laughs> You know, it's funny, I get this question all the time because I think people are surprised to meet a black swim instructor and they're like, how did you get into this? Because- Oh, I gotta do the Dave Chappelle thing. <laughs> name She's another black, black swim instructor that you know. <laughs> like, so, um, yeah, I actually used to be a baby that was afraid of the water. And so my mom took me to the public pool, used to drop me off, you know, back in the nineties when you can just drop your kids off places and pick them up hours later and not know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So she would drop me off at the public <laughs> pool during free swim. And she would leave me there for hours, pick me up, do it every day during the summer for a few summers actually, wow. to kind of desensitize me. And then officially put me in some lessons about six years old. I took some lessons, free swim lessons, oh, very discounted swim lessons at the public pool through the county. 
um, for several more summers. Eventually made it onto swim team at about 10 years old. Um, actually, at 10, nice. I taught a so little So wait a girl. minute. I, I want to make sure I have this right. So you're saying that you were going to the pool, getting desensitized to the water, so you were comfortable around it. Then you officially took swim lessons, but by age 10, you weren't mm -hmm. terrified anymore. You, you weren't. Team. You were super comfortable. Mm -hmm. I didn't even. I don't think I realized that they had. I was for some reason. I always think of swim team as like middle school or high school. And you know, so on YouTube is saying veggies are terrified of me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I don't know if you're terrified of the water or or just veggies. Uh, so on YouTube, but we're gonna work on that. And you said that you just, you were just saying um, Sam that you at the age of ten you taught somebody how to swim. Yeah, so um, we were in swim team practice, and I think we had just finished up. Like in a lot of public pools, they have like the lane line section. So there's like a section for lane lines, and then a section for like the shallow water. For people just kind of play. Yep. And we had finished the we had finished practice, and there were these little girls that were on the wall. You know, like in the three foot air, kind of hugging the wall because they yep. were too scared to stand up. But you know, even though kids can't swim, parents still let them in the water. And just say, I'm gonna just watch them. You know, they're in the shallow end, but the kids mm -hmm. still can't stand up. So I just swam over to her and asked one of the little girls if they wanted me to teach them how to swim. And I asked her parent and she said, yeah. So I think for maybe it was like a month or two, I can't quite remember, it was so long ago. But every day after swim practice, I would spend an hour teaching her how to swim. Wow. And Wait yeah, a minute, so I, for free or were, were her parents giving you like chips or money? Oh no, or it was for free. But did they even offer anything? I'm just trying to get see if you started business back then or no, you know. No, <laughs> no, it was purely just a desire. I was 10 years old. I was just like, hey, I can teach you how to swim because I know how to swim. And wow. I taught her to swim so well that she actually joined swim team with me. Wow. Yeah. So that was nice. Great. So, yeah. so that, so, you know, so you that's really a great like water story because Philip says, Queen, to tell your water story. I got so many. And I told you, Corey taught me how to swim when I was 18. So uh, the only water stories I had was that I was black and we couldn't get our hair wet, so I couldn't really swim. Uh, what were you gonna say, Corey? Oh no, I was just gonna say that's that right there. So that was the moment. That's like a moment of self actualization because you realize, like, hey, I can do this. And is that where the where the, the TWP popcorn's daughter still can't swim? He says he's gonna throw her back in the pool. Uh, <laughs> he actually said that gotta throw my daughter back in the pool next year. <laughs> so is that is that what? <laughs> don't do that. To that. <laughs> you are, you shouldn't have said that online because now it's like you a CPS case wouldn't happen. <laughs> but no. But uh, Sam, are you? Is that where you start? saying hey i can do this i can teach other side of swim this is what you know my life's passion my life's dream this is my life's goal this is going to be a business is that where it started for you oh, philip tell all my business i was getting water <laughs> on my face everybody was <laughs> uh, to answer your question absolutely not that was never a thought in my mind for i'd probably say another 12 years after that wow. um okay. i yeah i was on some team i did some team for a few years i ended up doing some team again in high school um, in high school, I somehow finagled my way into an internship where part of my internship involved working with the aquatic director with her program. I told her I knew how to swim, but I don't think she believed me. And so one day she saw me swimming laps and said, oh, you can really swim. So she put, she made me join some team oh. and then saw, and then I ended up again, finagling my way somehow, assisting in teaching some private lessons. And I think I, I worked with a couple clients there. Uh, and then in college, because I had some experience teaching private lessons, I worked with a company who did like third party swim lessons for people in Miami. And that was my first professional job teaching people how to swim and getting paid for it, but finally getting paid for it. Nice. At about 19, I did it on and off throughout college. And towards the end of college, I thought that my career was going to be working in nonprofit and being poor for the rest of my life because I just wanted to serve the community. Right, because and once got, you have that feeling, mm -hmm. uh, let me ask you this, and I'm just guessing, but you thought that was going to be your destiny because you realize like helping people is so impactful, you know? And so once you had that feeling of helping people, you said, oh, I'll just service folks and all of that. Did you realize that other people really were, and I'm asking this question because Wally said, you know, she must be from the better parts of Florida, but a lot of us, we have that poor people's mindset where we're just thinking, I guess I just better serve people, help people, whether or not it serves me. And yeah. we believe that, you know, oh, the, the love of money and all of that. So did you even realize that, wait a minute, 
my coaches are getting paid. It's okay for me to get paid as well. Um, and you, you know, I'm saying this too, because Sony YouTube said in Africa, our parents beat us for playing with water, not even <laughs> mention swimming. <laughs> and she was like, once you swim that day, you know, you're going to get a beat. And so it's like, okay, they literally have to sink or swim in other words, yeah. but go ahead. You were saying, okay, I was at that point where I was like, I guess I'll just be poor serving people. Uh, Natty Slim is listening. So tell us from there, what are you thinking, you know, for your destiny? How did that path continue? Well, the nonprofit I worked with had nothing to do with teaching people how to swim. It was just a nonprofit. I thought it would be a tunnel, you know, <laughs> me entering like this precipice of, uh, did it go from 11 to high school and college? I did. I did. <laughs> Cause those are the swimming related portions of life. <laughs> like, right. Um, but yeah, the nonprofit had nothing to do with swimming. It was just a nonprofit. I thought this would be the start to my career in nonprofit and they fired yeah. me after one week. So I realized that was not for me. Um, absolutely devastated thinking that I have no career now. I my, my mom was actually recommending, she goes, why don't you just go back to the swimming and just do it yourself? And I was like, I was very confused as I had I never had an, an idea, an inkling or a desire to be a business owner, to be working for myself. I didn't right. mind working for other people. Um, I enjoyed leadership, but it was never a desire in my heart. But after I got fired, I kind of just, <laughs> I was like, you know what? I'm going to do what I got to do. <laughs> I'm going to so, do what I got to do. Hold so, on. So, Samantha, tell the truth. You got fired on your day off of stealing boxes, didn't you? <laughs> I want so, you to know, I was upset when they fired me. I was like, how could y'all do this to me? Mm. Right. Because, you know, I see here this post on your Instagram. And I'm doing this because we have so many Islanders in the chat, Corey. Uh, Jamaican synchronized swimming team featured a new Beyonce visual album, Black is King. So things things like that, were those, you know, influences for you to realize, like, I can do anything. Uh, not, of course, by now you're established when this video has come out. But did you have any of those moments? Because Next Gen Investor says in the Caribbean, swimming is family time, but some islands might be different. But yeah, black people can't swim, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? So on YouTube has your experience where she says she got fired on her first job after three days as well. That's when she realized she needed to work for herself. Yeah. And look, Nancy well, Swim, well, Sonya, Slim says, you started swimming after you got faster after you got fired. Well, so, <laughs> yeah. well, YouTube, you know, you can't walk out the front door with the cash register on the third day. So, you know, well, you can <laughs> But yeah, and Laquia is asking a good point because um, it goes right to that health, business, and wealth. It's really, we're all about on this channel, and so are you. Because the the why behind you understand the why behind your business is you know really special because people don't really understand. We've been saying it all along, but really quickly, my grandfather back in the day, you taught yourself how to swim by going to the as they call it the creek. You go to the creek <laughs> and you jump in and you just do what you see other people can swim doing. Mm. And he and his brothers and some friends went swimming at the creek, the creek, and they went to uh, swim across. And My his, dad had a story like this. His, his little brother. But their cousin. In, his, his little brother jumped in behind them. And when mm. they went to the other side, they turned around and never saw that little brother again. Yeah. And so, that's I think story. that's why we couldn't swim either, because my dad had an experience. The boys could go, but the girls couldn't, where his cousin was lost swimming with other children. Yeah. So let everybody know the important, the socioeconomic impact of swimming or learning how to swim, because people understand better why this is a business that you're in, and then maybe they can discover and understand their why and how they can help to formulate their yeah, own business. because Crafty Mom Creations is listening, and she is a crafty person. So let us know the why. Is that what you asked for? Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> so I started my business because when I was working for a company that also provided private swim lessons, the demographic seemed very unfitting to the area that we were serving. So mm -hmm. a lot of our clientele were rich and white and privileged. And mm -hmm. that didn't make sense because statistically 64% of black people can't swim as well that black and brown people drown three to five times more likely than white people. That's so what Matthew really Swim Slim said. I'm so sorry about those children, you know, that were lost. That's yeah. what happens. It's And it's such a high prevalence and for different reasons. But yes, that, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, you know what? I'm, I think I did say Gail at night is dropping all the links. Y'all mm -hmm. connect with mm -hmm. Sam. She's on LinkedIn, Instagram, swim with Sam everywhere. So go ahead, Sam. You were saying 64% of uh, black, black and brown people cannot swim. And then three the problem with Sheila, can you swim? Go ahead, Corey. Three to five <laughs> drowning, three out of five drownings are of, of people of color, black and brown, black and brown people. Is that correct? 
So it's um, three to black and brown people drown three to five times more likely okay. than mm -hmm. white people do. And that's just the statistic. So realizing that, you know, of the, let's say a hundred people that I worked with, with that company, I can count on my hand the amount of black people. It was probably three. But wow. then when I worked from, when I started working for myself, I ensured that my target audience was our community. All my marketing was black people in the water. All my educational content was focused on our experiences, um, increasing the understanding of like the science behind water, how we manage our hair in the water, how we manage our skin, how black people are participating in non-traditional activities like synchronized swimming, like going surfing, like going wakeboarding, like doing any and everything that involved the water because we were actually created to swim. It's not something that is outside of our realm. So that was really my interest was to teach and educate and kind of help us rethink and reshift our mind to understand that this is something we participate in just because we may not have been allowed to for many many years it doesn't mean it's something we cannot do those are different lovely mm -hmm. you know everybody is really excited about this information wally's like life always gives you lemons so you can make lemonade uh, mm -hmm. salute to the service business because you know he was saying they may have fired you but they opened that door for you as well you know nazi slim her daughter is a bad swimmer she started swimming at five or six and i know for you that was part of your story you said okay i was just kind of playing around in the water but then you officially got lessons like with corey he taught me to swim when we were both 18 Poor G. Albert, him and his wife, they got together years ago uh, because of the water, because he was the manager or swim instructor at the city pool. Mm -hmm. His wife was one of his students and uh, Faith planned for them to hook up for 43 years Why of marriage. Poor G. Albert? Because his wife still can't swim. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Poor G. What, kind of, what kind of swim instructor were you, G. Albert? Look, he doesn't want to So, So like you're saying, you started out where, okay, you're just playing in the water. Corey taught us how to swim, but those official lessons make a difference. And just like Ism was saying, okay, my daughter, I need to throw her back in the pool because she's still not good. Bravo with Sheila, ladies, let's chat. Yes, I can swim. And my grandson has been in the water getting lessons since he was three months every Friday and he's three now. So that leads to my final question because we got to do the first place pony mm -hmm. giveaway. Do you recommend swim lessons for those of us that are like, yeah, I can swim. You know, we can just dog paddle. But this child is three, still taking lessons and probably, you know, going to get better. But you tell us. Oh, absolutely. And to be honest, most adults who say they can swim, they can't swim. Yeah. <laughs> they, they have a survivalist type of swimming. I can get in and not drown, but I cannot mm -hmm. functionally, confidently and smoothly swim across this pool. Right. And that's the reality. And that is true. That's what Corey I, can do when he can't see. <laughs> I, I don't, and I don't consider myself, I don't have my style. Oof, boy, I, I'm kind of looking like Free Willy in the water, probably. Because I, I do a lot of splashing. But, no, uh, not really. I, like when you go across the pool and I stuff. Don't, mm -hmm. I feel like I am. But, no. uh, but yeah, I've, um, like I said, I, it's, it's definitely something, like I said, because the socioeconomic impact of the swimming, like you said, of course, it sounds weird to say it out loud, but if people are drowning that's or near drowning or having water injuries in the water because they can't swim that's hospitalization that's mm -hmm. funerals that have to be paid for that's life insurance is being impacted but when people learn how to swim then those are <laughs> things they don't have to really consider they can take that out of the equation but also they can open themselves up for careers like swim like you swimming saying being a lifeguard or being a swim instructor so man this is this is really awesome because it makes people think out of the box well you know uh yeah, rambo yeah. is saying we need more swim swimming uh lessons to forget that and forget like the black people hair thing you are helping us with that. You offer adult lessons, children's lessons. You offer advice on what to do with your hair, how to manage all these different things, because those aren't obstacles, right? Of course, Bravo with Sheila, ladies, let's chat, says she still needs uh, lessons. And Philip says, I used to swim laps Monday through Friday. He did say once he stopped that, uh, you know, things change physically, but we ain't going to talk about that. <laughs> We've got to do the first place pony. And I think I, I do hear some more products coming from Swim, swim Theory, Swim Theory skincare, Swim Theory hair products, Swim Theory. Oh, <laughs> there are definitely some things in the works, so get excited. All right. Well, we're going to do our get excited about our first place pony derby. <laughs> Sam, this is where we do a giveaway so that the person that wins this, they, everybody can't be first place. Right. But somebody can have first place dragon rights and they'll get their link or their website dropped in the chat. It's just a, a, a social a social media shout out from on the, on this channel. So, you so we're going to give out. you a quick break. 
So that way, while we take a quick coffee break, uh, while you're backstage, please go and find the swim instructor at the Y that was holding Cassandra South Fulton Gardens head underwater. Uh, this, Cause so we can all look, go find out where she is. You know, while you're backstage, Chat, we're gonna roll up, we're gonna she, bust the window in her car. She can't go backstage yet. We got she gotta help with the first place pony. No, no, no. We're gonna take a quick coffee break okay. so that way she All can right. help with the first place gotcha. pony. She can get a, you know, she can wet her whistle. Can you believe that? Cassandra South Fulton Gardens said the the like the person at the YMCA mm. thought it was funny to hold her head on the water. Nah, of course she thought she that, was gonna die. It's that, like now how young was that person? That's what I wanna know. Girl, That's mm, like some mm, teenager mm. would do, but yeah. I know, right? So, anyways, let's give uh, her a quick break. Uh look, Giamma said, okay, Philip, no need to start cussing with the team with the term M dash F. <laughs> Keep your wrench. Uh, <laughs> All right, Nazi Slim, Nazi Slim needs to learn to swim on the deep side. Like you're saying, she's like most of us with business. We're swimming in the shallow end, and in real life, that's all we can do as well. So this is so wonderful. You're talking about how we can do both. Swim in business, swim in real life, in the water, in the ocean, if that's what we need to do. So right after this break, you're going to help us out with the first place pony, okay? All right. All right. It's time for a coffee break. Well, we thank those Lord, that helped Cassandra was only seven years old. Girl, look, this is where... You know, now that we got social media, so, uh, I'm not your, telling you what your parent, to do. Your parents are in jail, right? Because they, they had to pull a life from I'm just saying, <laughs> do what you got to do. You know what I mean? And we got so many, you can hire people. Anyway, go ahead, Corey. <laughs> well, this, this, we, this is a coffee break, but we take the time to encourage you. If you want to be a, give a donation or a virtual tip, go to our website, blindguyswife.com, and click the green coffee cup. Click, 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 click. Or you can take a deep dive into our relationship with you by doing what our sponsors have done. They have chosen us to help to bring this information to the masses. And we want to thank them right now by saying this broadcast was brought to you in part by promotional considerations paid for by the following unmuted sponsors. Thank you to our sponsors. Supreme sponsors, David and Christine Brooks. Supreme Sponsor, Dr. Linda Bailey Hayden of Elizabeth City State University. Supreme Sponsor, JDWR. Check out his YouTube channel. Supreme Sponsor, Cardio Conversation. Supreme Sponsor, Sandra Green. You or your company can become a sponsor. Visit blindguyhiswife.com. Thank you for that coffee break. And now we have to get into the first place pony because Philip, you know, he's over six feet. Talking about, I prefer deep water so I don't cheat and stand up. So you're going to bang them toes on the bottom of the pool. <laughs> the brother's like six foot 29. Right. Because you know, Wally is like, yeah, I can swim, just not the deep end, right along with Nazi Slim. So let's go for it, Corey. We're going to do the first place pony. If you haven't put in hashtag the home team, we're bringing Sam back in. So she's going to help us with that first place pony so i'm going to say sam i'm going to give the horse race announcement and when i say bring when i make the gate sound bring that's when you're going to say sink or swim are you ready yep all right here we go wait 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 why g albert trying to say your voice transition to barry white to introduce the sponsors you know what uh, i always do that that's on purpose <laughs> this broadcast is brought to you that's how the that's how the uh the uh the, the uh npr announcer sound this broadcast is brought to you by <laughs> considerations paid for by fall and sponsors right all right, so here we go. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another run of the blind guy, his wife, their life live. First place, Pony Derby. All the jockeys are mounted and ready to ride in this race. Sam, what do you say when you throw one of your students into the pool? Bring! <laughs> Sink or swim. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bravo with you, ladies. That's chat. Audrey's living life. Sony YouTube, K Business Podcast, GT Junior. Uh, Audrey's living life. K David Hunt, Rambo Green Hands on YouTube. GT Junior. <laughs> Junior. <laughs> Junior, wonderful, wonderful. Junior cut a hole in the ice and got on the back of his favorite walrus <laughs> and won the race. Congratulations, GT Junior, out in Alaska. And Gail at night, now my is going to drop you a link to say congratulations for your win. Yes. You know what? Growing with Hudson tried it. We wanted you to win as well. But GT Jr. came all the way from Alaska and won. Philip was trying to encourage Nazi Slim. But you all know that our guest 
with it today is Swim With Sam. She is now going to congratulate GT Jr. for winning the first place pony. Cause he's talking about me, me, me. <laughs> you tell him congratulations, please. Yes, congrats, congrats. Happy for you. <laughs> All right, well guys, stick and stay because we got more great information coming from Swim With Sam, who's gonna talk to us about how to stay afloat in business and how to take that deep dive into into expand your business all coming up but we gotta put her backstage so she can get a fancy introduction oh a fancy introductions okay lord knows well talk productions Bali says damn right salute to gt jr and the brother man you know <laughs> he's always with the brothers whenever a man wins he's cheering them on but the nice thing is so are all everybody so is everybody else philip waldo jr cassandra south fulton garden David Hunt says it's rigged. Now, just so you know, David Hunt is a vocalist. He's a singer, a pianist. He actually plays lots of instruments, but uh, he's probably singing that, okay? Everybody's congratulating <laughs> David Hunt. I mean, <laughs> PWP is congratulating GT, GT Jr. Jr. Uh, Sam, any tips that you want to give GT Jr. in Alaska? Because right now, I think they're heading into the super cold months right along with the rest of us here in the States. Any, any any suggestions or tips for him now he is a businessman he just bought a home uh he has his own business as well any tips whether it's a business tip whether it's a water tip any tips especially business i was actually gonna give a water tip because um oh, okay sure I think, give a water tip. I think a lot of people think that swimming is just for the summer but that's not true one there's indoor pools but mm -hmm. um for adults really even though they may have the capacity and for men especially men have the capacity to kind of muscle it in the water and just kind of make it work oh. but i say women are the ones that aren't going to take that chance and just say i don't know how to swim <laughs> but the best thing you can do as an adult to improve your quality of swimming is actually to work on your breath control so breath control in swimming is that when we're underwater we don't hold our breath most people think we do but we don't I do because trash said can it. wave said <laughs> swim or swim yep yesterday was swim <laughs> today is swim and trash can is a man so you're saying trash can, is a man. I know, trash can is a man so you're saying the men should not hold their breath neither should the woman but oh, tell me how about how you breathing. hold your breath or not hold your breath on the you're letting the air out oh, you're so when out. we swim we should be swimming is an exercise we should be actively breathing name one other exercise where you will hold your breath not exactly one. so when you're swimming when your head is above the water you take a breath in but then when your head is underwater, you should constantly be exhaling and your capability to exhale slowly, securely and not be anxious is a sign of improved lung capacity and breath control. So the better your breath control, the more you, the longer you can stay underwater and the more comfortable you can feel. So I recommend for like someone who lives in a colder area or is just getting cold in that time of year, practicing breath control at home is something you can do very easily. Just take a bowl, like a large bowl of water and literally just practice sitting at the table, taking a breath in through your mouth oh. and then blowing the air out through your nose. Natchez Slim said it, blowing bubbles. Yeah, that <laughs> so if you can blow, if you can take a full breath where your lungs are completely full of air and then blow it out slowly with your face in, in the water the mm. whole time, you'll actually improve your lung capacity. It's a great activity for people who have um, low lung capacity, maybe recovering from like COVID and they've had um issues with their lungs you can actually practice just breathing and blowing you say breathing water. wait no you say breathing exercises not trash can waves bedroom exercises right yeah breathing <laughs> breathing, breathing so. but you know i don't know this might this might be good for bedroom exercises it'll give you that capacity <laughs> like you're saying so okay we and, can use it so gt jr says thanks for the tip sam and you wash your face at the same time all right <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's a great tip, like I said, and again, it kind of, kind of coincides with the business <laughs> side of things too. You gotta be able to take, you gotta be able to take that breath, and then, like I said, be able to control your control your breathing. That means basically you gotta be able to take control of your business as well. I like to make sure you keep your head above water, make a wave when you can, and then when you mm. go through those temporary layoffs, you can breathe in. You know what? <laughs> those are good times. Growing with Hudson says, didn't know that. Good to know. So thank you. You know, people talk about breath control. Of course, while he's laughing at the bedroom exercises. But anyways, mm -hmm. Trash Can wants to says, let me get this straight. You want me to fill my lungs with water. <laughs> you're, you're the one that's liable. Don't worry, Trash Can. She told us about the business insurance earlier. What's questions to ask, how to secure that. So that way, if somebody like you try to pin her, 
She's got it on tape. What she actually now said. Now he said she said take a breath, <laughs> a breath of a full lung, full breath, a breath of air. He then it. put your face in the water and then exhale slowly. But he asked. He did bring up a question. Are you SWAM certified here in uh, Virginia? No, I'm actually not SWAM certified, which is funny. Not yet. I know we learned about it in our program, but I still haven't done it yet. I'm going to work on it. Yes. You know, that's good to know about. Uh, business accelerators will help you out. Uh, in our area, it's called SWAM, Small Women and Minority Owned. And yesterday we learned that whatever diversity in different states, there's a diversity initiative that you can Google. So this is always good. Well, we're going to uh, definitely say goodbye for now to give you another break. Trash can, that's the Aquaman move, Philip is saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we'll see you soon, okay? All right. All right. All right, Corey. Well, guys, we just tuning in. We want to say thank you for joining us on this episode of The Blind Guy. His wife. Your life live here for you every Wednesday. Thursday. And Friday at 11.15. 11, 11.15 11, a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And on this on this broad live, in our sick one-hour talk show, we talk about all things health, business, and wealth to change your narrative of normal about all those topics by introducing you to great information and fabulous guests. Today's fabulous guest is no exception to the fabulous guest rule. Mm. Today's fabulous guest is an aquatics instructor who is making money by diving into the real profits of her business. She is such an avid swimmer and such a great businesswoman. She is like Scrooge McDuck, but he can dive into his own personal money being and swim through dollars and coins. She is such a great, great aquatics instructor that she trained the person that's playing Submariner that's coming up in the next Black Panther sequel. She is the person that Aquaman and Submariner were based off of. So they should have been Submariner it and Aquawoman. Well, you know, there's a little, new Little Mermaid uh, film. Yes, she is a vision of Ariel herself on land. She makes the Little Mermaid look like bubble guppies. It's time for today's special guest. She's none other than the person that can help you to never drown again. <laughs> Swim with Sam. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. How are you? <laughs> good, I'm good. So listen, this is what happens, right? Not too slim was like, oh, that's a nice introduction. And everybody's laughing with it. Uh, you know, GT Jr. and uh, Trash Can is like, oh, got that Hollywood money. It's, you know, uh -huh. listening to your intro. But Sir Hale Speaks just hey, came Sir through. Hale. Thank you Sir for the Hale. super chat. Sir Hale Speaks. <laughs> he's, not yes. he's not British, but he's Sir Hale. A wonderful network uh, talking about so many things. And his wife is the crypto lady. So I know that you're into business and we have all of this wealth talk that we're speaking today about how we can improve our lives so that we can have a wealthier lifestyle with swimming so that we can improve our lives by running our business from the passion that we have or our talents and all of those good things. We're coming up to the top of the hour, but we still got plenty to talk about. So that means we want to hear more right now about the like staying afloat for your business. Go ahead, Corey. And we, you've done that. We mentioned it uh, on a couple of occasions here in this broadcast by connecting with other like-minded business people. How talk, important is that? How important is that? And talk about those like-minded business people that you met along the way. <laughs> oh yeah, finding a community and people who are, whether they're in your same industry or just in um, business, entrepreneurship in general are really key. I feel like one of the major keys is success because you know, if you're the only person who is doing what you do, how can you really have people pour into you? They can support you and mm -hmm. love what you do, but I need real actionable steps. I need practical help. I need someone to help me with the plan, to help mm -hmm. me with projections, to help me with vision. And some people just, they don't, they don't have the experience. So finding people, one, who are in your community, in your industry, right. um, in business and entrepreneurship who are well connected, but also people who have been doing it for much longer than you. And having a different insight and perspective definitely helps to shape you and how you decide to do business moving forward. So wait a minute, why do you say this? Because uh, I know you were saying that right now with your rebranding, you're trying to figure out, okay, let me 
figure out several different things, right? Sir Hale Speaks is a business person. So he has like a fitness business as well as his network where, you know, he broadcasts and all of those kinds of things. And you're saying, well, I was asking my mom or I was asking my friend about certain things. And now you're telling us, mm, stick with the networks, stick with the business folks. Is there a certain mindset or any advice that they would give you that the other non-business folks, you know, they wouldn't? Because Little Ruby's Daycare Encounters, she's a business person, right? I might go to her to ask a question, but because she's a business person. But tell us why some of your experiences, how that has worked. Yeah, I definitely say um, for a lot of changes that I'm doing in my business, I would ask my friends who are also business owners are people mm -hmm. who work in business development um, for a reason, because there was just a completely different world that you know is focused on branding and marketing and creating business plans and how to structure your business versus asking your friends who just hear something cool and something that you're not doing and say that sounds great everything sounds great you know or they want to change an image let's say you're changing your logo or you're you know creating a, a page for your website you know they're just gonna suggest based on things that they've seen or mm -hmm. things that they like or they things that they feel will just look pretty but does it actually make sense for a branding perspective? Is it actually going to attract clients? Is it going to be something that where people are understanding my mission and vision through it? Or is it just, you know, or is it too basic? You know, is it something that has no depth? You know, really understanding what is the mission and goal of your business, of your branding and the message that you want to have? What kind of clients are you trying to attract? And all those things kind of come into play of how we present ourselves. But sometimes asking people who are just friends and family who support what you do may not kind of have that perspective. Yeah. And definitely, uh, I feel like it can miss the mark because, again, people are just proud of you for doing something big. It's just doing something big and they say, oh, you're doing great. Am I doing great or could I be doing better? or could you be doing better because tw popcorn says yep you definitely need other experts to advise like yeah. you're saying your fan club or your friends they're going to support you no matter what richmond we do have a fan a friend right there in the house so hey there richmond we are nearing the top of the hour so we so, do need everybody to put in hashtag swim home with team sam. Oh, oh yeah hashtag swim with sam oops <laughs> well actually let's go you want to do that no no hashtag, hashtag swim with sam okay right hashtag swim with sam because that's how they'll find her for now right. until she mm -hmm. and you know sir hale said excellent questions for branding now lord is it shallow breathing that's trash can't wait <laughs> no with with the actual uh you stand afloat you know you found a network within uh 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 b force black brand which is the Ooh. hampton rose black chamber of commerce in virginia and you recently got a nice grant if you want to give them out we'll let you do that it's but, already on social media anyways yeah. with the six thousand dollar check it's so big you can't hide, right? <laughs> so she got a six thousand dollar grant and how are you using that to actually grow the scale your business so how are you going to take the deep dive with this particular money Oh yeah, um, thinking about growth is also thinking about how can you step away? Um, I think mm -hmm. a lot of people think about my business is gonna grow and I'm gonna be so busy and everything's being great. But the reality is I want to own my business, not run it. And that's not the goal. Um, and so with that grant, I am working towards developing training materials to create an automated process so that I can onboard people who wants to become swim instructors, who want to serve our community and go out there teaching us how to conquer the water. All nice. Right. Now, I will I will say that building out your business so that you can scale, that's a great way to do it. Uh, we want to put hashtag, don't we put any spaces, Nazi Slim. Um, don't I see a space between the hashtag and swim. And also, don't put your own interest in here, hashtag Summer of Sam. You know who did that for it? Summer of Yeah. Trash kids. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, uh, taking a deep dive uh, into business, you were recently in the B Force Accelerator, and uh, <laughs> yep, Trash Can says, "Damn, Corey, he just read Queen's Mind." Watch, he pulled up my comment because he said, "Dive deeper." What did he say? Dive into deep water. Dive into the deep end is what mm -hmm. he said, and so that's what we're talking about right now: diving deeper into business. Because in order for you to scale, that's one thing you have to do, right? You have to build out your business, and if you have that training platform on your website is that where it's going to go or will it be a separate training uh place or tell us a little bit about it how how have you worked through that so it'll be something on the back end where people that want to work with us 
who want to become swim instructors, um, they would go through, it's like, it, it's not something that's going to be public, but it will be our own personal training onboarding program just to make mm. it a bit more seamless. Again, how can people join the team without me having to put in that much work to make it happen? Right. right. So if we want to get in touch with Sam, you know, the, the uh, Gail and the other moderators are dropping her links. Her website is here, www.swimwithsam.com. You can learn all about Sam's mobile aquatics instruction business. And she is she is teaching people, y'all. We've been showing you what's happening on the screen. So right now, the Instagram video that you see of somebody swimming across the pool, that is a student of Sam's. So, and it says her stroke development has improved so much in just two weeks of lessons. So those are the types of things that you'll be teaching other swim instructors. You'll be teaching them techniques so that they can have successful swimmers. Is that right? Absolutely. Nice. All right. So guys, we're going to do this last drawing. Oh, so, wait, what's the giveaway? Oh, Did I have to say Yes, yes, she's gonna, she's rebranding. Her new brand is gonna be Swim Theory. And she said what she wants to do is come up with a t-shirt slogan. The two t-shirt slogans are, Samantha? Yeah, so one, so again, the company's name is Swim Theory. That's what I'm shifting to. And we're looking for a slogan. Uh, we're kind of stuck between two. Um, one of them, again, our target audience is the black, is the black community, but also primarily black women. So we're thinking of shifting. My favorite one is, um, it's gonna be Swim Theory. And then the slogan is gonna be the Swim Club for Black Women. But we're also more so shifting to like the lifestyle experience that you have when you are now a black person who can swim versus sitting on the beach, but can't actually get past, you know, my ankles getting wet. So also there's an option to do like swim theory, you know, access an aquatic lifestyle, which I think both sound cool. You know, give okay, it, so it wait a minute. Vibe. Swim theory. Uh, access an aquatic lifestyle. Or... And, and the first one that you said, because it's the swim club for black women. Because Trash Can said how to swim without getting your hair wet. And so, yeah, so that would let us know. Swim club for black women or access, aquatic, and, aquatic access and aquatic lifestyle. Access and aquatic lifestyle. All right. Whoever wins this final giveaway is going to be able to add their vote in. So how are we going to do this giveaway, Tori? I'm going to say three, two, one. And Sam, you're going to say swim with Sam. Okay. All right. Three, two, and the one. Swim with Sam. All right, let's see. We got Philip Baldwin Jr. growing with Hudson. Bravo with Sheila Ladies. Let's chat. GT Jr. G. Albert. Bravo with Sheila. Cassandra South Fulton Garden. GT Jr. Trash can't wait. GT Jr. G. Albert growing with Hudson. GT, wait a oh, minute. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> One again. My goodness, that's what I'm talking All about. All right, Junior. So you get to choose which slogan she's going to put on. I think her he might have gone to work because, you know, usually yeah. he's on his way driving into right. work. Well, he may still be out there. We'll give him a few moments. Now, my personal favorite one, Sam, I had come up with one just now was, girl, don't, girl, just jump in there. Don't worry about your hair. <laughs> that's not the slogan. That's no, going to be the other thing. Oh, okay. Uh oh, okay. So, Junior, give I'll us an answer. That. He's here. He's like, no, I'm here. Thumbs up. So, y'all know. Every, oh, he says he's driving. So, we'll just you can just put a one or two. The first slogan is. The swim club for black women. Swim club for black women. The second slogan is accessing aquatic lifestyle. All right. So you can just put a one or two. Look at Wallet. Wait, what? I wasn't here. What's the prize? It was actually private swim lessons with Sam when she comes to Florida. Mm -hmm. She was gonna come in a two-piece song type of situation. But yeah, GT Jr. Jane got Run, it. And since, she, since he's in Alaska, she's gonna just wear a full uh wetsuit. She can't wear the thong in Alaska. She right. Frostbite. And look, Philip is like, how did Alaska enter? And he's driving. Look, <laughs> you got to do whether you got to twerk in the deep end, like Trash Can said. You, we are doing what we got to do. So good news, he has voted. While we look at his vote, dun dun dun. Are you ready, Corey? Because uh, she Gaelic might drop his link. You know, subscribe to his YouTube channel. He's showing us Alaska. Um, number two. Hey, oh, really? Okay. 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 Access. Accessing aquatic lifestyle. Access and aquatic lifestyle. Access and aquatic lifestyle. Yeah. Mm, well, I said accessing. Uh, I think I was trying to only make it three words because you know they try to say three words. But anyways, the whole point is everybody's happy here. They're laughing and look at Wally. Uh, Sam's like, hold on now. I don't know about that. No. But situation. You say that. Uh, Wally. Oh yeah. <laughs> And look, y'all, GT Junior is giving y'all the tip. Just talk to text. That's all you got to do if you're driving. So everybody's congratulating him. 
and we want to congratulate you because we appreciate you being here. We are excited for your win with your grant so that way you can build out the systems and grow and scale and all of those good things. We're going to ignore G. Albert and David Hunt because they always trying to, um, yeah, they always in with rig. Well, Sam, we got to ask you one last question before we put you backstage. Thank you, Grandma Hudson. The question is, what fruits, vegetables, or whole grains have you eaten or do you plan to eat today? Oh, what fruits, vegetables, or whole grains have you had today? Well, I had some rambutan earlier today, so I'm going to finish that. That's my fruit. What was it? Rambutan. Oh, I'm not familiar yeah. with that fruit. Wait, hold on. I bet you well, don't say a word. about Rambo Green has about jab down. Let's see, Rambutan grows not on, on on a vine. And he knows everything. He knows everything. Yes. Yeah, Rambutan, I believe um, it's a it's a tropical fruit. So, uh, well, this is north for me for everybody. Let's. This is north. I'm from Florida, so this is north. But in Florida, um, it's a tropical fruit. So it's a cousin of like the lychee or guinea, and it has uh, like it has like a lot of like spiky hairs on it. And mm -hmm. when you crack it, it's red. But then when you crack it open, it has white flesh, and you just eat like the opaque white flesh. Girl, oh, okay. let me tell you, all I love, I love all guinea. The, yeah, I love guinea, and all the gardeners knew. G two Junior was like, oh yeah, it's red. The grown husband, mm -hmm. the spiky fruit. They already know, right? <laughs> yeah. G Albert, him over there with those doggone grits. And thank you for spelling that, Cassandra South Fulton Garden. Now I know what to look for when I come in your yard and grocery shop. She <laughs> yes. says, I love Rampatan. <laughs> yes, so for anyone detoxing, I don't even know if I should read this aloud. For anyone detoxing and fasting, my free slogan for you is starving and pooping. You know what? what is it? Trash, <laughs> Trash can. can. <laughs> oh, you know what? Chi Jr. did ask what it tastes like because he wanted to actually grow it, but he's never asked anyone what it tastes like. Well, it's sweet. The texture, um, it's definitely a sweet fruit. The texture, like it, it clings to the seed a little bit. So you have to like bite it off the seed. Mm -hmm. um, not as stuck on as get up. Uh, it's a bit crunchier than Ginnup is. Ginnup is softer, have more mm -hmm. fleshy, but it's uh, it's a bit crunchier to get off. It's delicious, very sweet. Yeah. Ginnup reminds me, taste has a, has a bubble gum taste to me. The, so the Rambutan really? has a single taste. Yes. It's different. It's, it's different. different. Okay, all right. All right. Trash can. We're going to ignore you too. Let Corey finish. That would have been a funny <laughs> clip on the white fruit. You know what? Stop, Wally, stop encouraging him. Y'all just go check out Swim With Sam. Y'all know where to go. Swim With Sam on Instagram, LinkedIn, and that's her website until she transitions her branding. And you'll know about that if you're following her. This has been a wonderful uh, time with you, Sam. So Sam, we're going to put you backstage. In, in the, the green room. In the green room. Just hang out there. And once this broadcast is over, we'll talk to you one-on-one -on -one in the background. But thank you for coming out today. Yes, it's been great. It's been really nice talking to everybody. Yes, right. absolutely. We'll see you soon. All right. Bye. All right. It's time. Oh, good. GT Jr. said, oh, okay. Oh, and Philip said, hit him up too. It's time, who me? Yep. It's time for today's <laughs> plant based treat by Chef Laquita Marie. Getting you to eat fruits, vegetables, whole grains, everything at every single meal. So here's something that most of you have access to. Pretty much everybody. Enjoy. Peace that, please. All right, so I got the beans in here with a bag of beans. I think it was a 12-ounce bag. Cook on medium-high for 30 minutes. And to finish chopping this rutabaga, I've already taken the skin off. Chop one rutabaga and two onions. Rutabagas are rich in vitamin C, cancer-fighting antioxidants, and they build strong bones. Great for fiber, too. A couple of bay leaves. Bay leaves are rich in vitamins A and C, iron, potassium, calcium, and magnesium. Cover this. We're just gonna let it cook until those vegetables get soft another 10 minutes. One teaspoon of smoked paprika. Paprika contains a lot of iron. It's important to eat it with the source of vitamin C. A teaspoon of seasoning salt with garlic. A teaspoon of seasoning salt with chili powder. So I'm just gonna add this homemade sausage. Plant-based sausage. That I made, I just browned it a little bit. So we're just gonna add a little bit of salsa for our tomatoes. One cup of salsa or crushed tomatoes. Make sure you take out the bay leaves. These are the best black eyed peas ever. They have lots of flavor. I agree. I, I like how there was stuff around the beans instead of just the beans. All, All right. Y'all, right. Well, thank you for joining us for this episode of The Blind Guy. His wife. Their life live. Do you have any closing comments before we go? You know, Trash Can says, yeah, put those beans in my taco. Uh, now, GT Jr., who was left handed, whoever's stirring that, they aren't left handed. <laughs> <laughs> G. Albert is saying uh, thanks 
Y'all have a great day. Philip saying, thanks, Sam. And you know, Wally, I'm always telling him what to do. We always fighting and he's telling me back, don't tell me what to do, Laquita. <laughs> this dude moves on his own terms and he's got the um, emoji there. And he was like, oh, was that sausage? If it was, it was plant-based sausage. So boom, we got the, banging. they were banging. And of course the playlist, the plant-based playlist is right there. Gail at night has dropped it. How do we drop this episode for it? We're going to say goodbye. Thank you, Bravo with Sheila. We're going to say goodbye, goodbye. But first, remember, join us every Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at 11.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for more great conscious and other great guests. And we're going to say goodbye the same way that Swim with Sam would say goodbye. <laughs> hey, Burundi and Travel. Say goodbye He's in Kenya. to her competition when she was leaving them behind on the swim team. She would say, deuces. <laughs> Deuces. Thank you all. Have a good day. <laughs> Deuces.